generation needed a voice, yeah. and for us that voice was the pins. The music scene in Sydney, it was fucking dead man, there was nothing. Pins just blew it out of the water. They all had such personalities, you know, Jimmy was the brains behind a bunch. Richie, he held it all together man. Ollie, she was, she was a bit of the shy one, I guess. You know, fucking Jay, he was mental. And who could forget Megan Hines tits? I don't know what Adam was doing in the band. <laughs> Look, pins, they're awesome. Everyone loved them. The thing is though, they tried to steal a fucking lady. And fuck that. Fuck that. You know, I've got my own band now. They're so much fucking more important than the pins ever were or will be. Because that band is a fucking job. Who? Oh, the pins. Yeah. Um, fucking hell. Uh, oh, I don't know. I don't know what to say about them. Like, they hit it hard. They, they did something that will stick around and if you were there to witness it, you know who the fucking pins are. And... If you're like, who are the pins? It's, like, you, were, you clearly weren't there. You, know? you, mi you missed out on the pins. And don't ask anyone. Like, experience that. It's, yeah. We are the pins! We are the pins! And we don't... We are the pins! Oh, we are the pins! Oh, yeah! We are the pins! Oh, yeah. we are the pins. Yeah. I think it's quite hard to really define the impact that the pins had on the punk movement and culturally across the world. I mean, when you look back at the, at the, at the writings in there and then their social impact specifically, I mean, you have a look at someone like James Manson, he was a, he was a, he was a brilliant guitarist. I, I read that when he, was, when he was 14, he went down to the south of India and he really, he really turned it on. He learned to, you know, he really, he really, he really took, took the industry by the foot and he, he learned to play guitar with his feet, with his feet, not, not just with his hands, but with his with his feet, and the way that he was doing that was rhythmically, he was shifting, he was moving, he was shaping, and when I saw the images that he'd then drawn in conjunction with that, it didn't look like feet, and that was the beautiful thing, it looked like hands, and no one could really pinpoint how he'd come up with that or what was transcending beyond him to create that, but the idea of feet being hands and hands being feet, I mean, what really encapsulates punk more than rewriting what is to create something that is not yet? Now I'm not going to talk about things. I'm not going to talk about a band that isn't part of music history. Please, I'm from Rolling Stone magazine, you know? We only talk about bands that are in, in music history, part of the industry, that are really something. Them, they're... Are you filming? Um, yeah, I mean... Pins were like the best band. They they shaped my adolescence. I feel like they really made me the person that I am today. Uh, you didn't even have to see them play at a show to get that feeling. I mean, the best show that I ever saw <laughs> was the one where they didn't play. But they were just such an important band. A friend of mine came down and he was like, Pins, you know, they're, 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 they're fucking amazing. And, uh, you know, I thought, well, you know, why not, you know. So I went down to the, the club and uh, the first two bands were fucking, you know, just good, you know, just, just a good band. Um, and the Pins came on. And, uh, I mean, I don't know if they were any good or not, I mean, like, they could have been great, but before they even started playing, the lead singer just jumped out and punched my wife in the face. Which I thought was fair enough. I mean, like, you know, she's a pain in the ass, but... You know, I, th I think when you then look at someone like Megan to really counter that, like, her tits were... 
unquestionably fantastic in the way that, in which the audiences would respond to that. We know it stopped shows. We know it stopped shows. We know it, it, it resulted in shows not even beginning, not even being conceived of. And when you think about something like that and the impact that it can have, the way in which it can shape, I think we all agree and we have agreed really, you know, since the late 60s. Uh, it's been written many times. There were scholarly articles by by Rubenstein and by Sanfon and by Clifo, and they, they've written many times about the impact of a, a good set of a good set of rests, the way in which they they can move on stage. And... The pens. I love the pens. Best band ever. So fucking good. That band. The pens. <laughs> You know, so I thought, well, this is, you know, they've really got something here. You know, I mean, like, there's something about this band. I mean, I haven't heard them. I don't know what their music's like. I've only seen, actually, I've only seen the, the, the lead singer. Because the rest of the band weren't, they, well, they were on their way out. But then they had to, you know, sort of, you know, to leave. So, over the next few weeks, I thought, well, you know, this is, this is going to be big. You know. A band that can come on stage and then just be off stage before they even play the first tune, that's, that's something else. I mean, and, and leave that impression. I mean, that's punk rock. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's, that's real. Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's channeling Iggy, but to a purer Iggy. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's, like, that's the Stooges, but that's like the st part of the Stooges. The pins. Wow, Jesus. I mean, I know my punk. The pins, I'd read about them, I'd heard about them, and I heard they were playing at a show, so I went down to see them. I took my friend, uh, he didn't even want to go, to be honest, because he's not really, he had, a, he had an assignment he had to do um, some sort of like chemistry assignment that day or something. Or... But uh, I said, no, come, come along and see this band. Um, they're meant to be fucking dynamite. He came along. I bought him drinks. I paid for his fucking ticket entrance as well. They didn't play. There was about four people in the audience. Two of them were working behind the bar. I saw some woman get punched in the face. I, I think someone jumped back on the stage. It was it was one of the band members. It was carnage. And then they left. And that was it. There was no music. There was no music. I didn't hear any music that night. All I saw was someone get punched in the face. Some woman with a bloody nose. And that was it. So uh, yeah. So we. I mean, like. I tried to get hold of them, and it was just impossible. I mean, none of them had any phone numbers, none of them had any... Well, they didn't even have any names at the time. They were just called pins. I mean, like, you're, you're, walking, around, you're walking around the city saying, have you seen the pins? Yeah, everyone's looking at you like a fucking joke. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's where their genius is, really. Have you seen a pin? I'm looking for a pin. Oh, fuck off. You know, so, anyway... Um, Pins, though. I've known them for years. They're old friends. I, I still call them friends, but um, that friendship died a, quite a few years ago. They used to come into the club, and uh, you know, it was great hanging out with them, but as soon as they were about to be signed and they were on the verge of stardom, the shit hit the fan. I mean, <laughs> ever since then, they've just walked into my bar they ripped the shit up. They haven't given a shit about what's been going on, and um, they've they've shown very little respect for me as a friend and as a club owner. You know what? Fuck the pins. Somehow we get somehow we get hold of them and. Uh... Through a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend, we, we arranged this kind of meeting to sign this deal. We go down to the low down bar, um, everyone turns up. It's quite a, you know, like everyone's feeling really good about this, you know. I mean, like, 
like no one knows what their music's like, but they know what their attitude's like, and that's the that's the point. And they're photogenic. Um, so um, you know, but we're sitting there, we're sitting around the table. RF comes down. He's got the brings up the champagne. Everyone's having a few sips. We, yeah, we, I put out the contracts. I'm like, just sign there. Your life's gonna be, you know, sorted. You know. And then Adam just, I don't know, out of nowhere, just throws up. I mean, I don't know what he's been eating. It's just like this. It's like a sea. It's like it's like a sea of misery that just comes out of his face. Like, and it just keeps going. I mean, like, there's pickles in there. There's, like, those little mini, like, corny... What do they call them? Cornichons? Like, tiny little cucumbers that have been pickled. You know, that sort of thing. Like, you know, it's just... It's just fucking disgusting. Well, really, I mean, that <clears throat> Adam Ray didn't really have much to do with the band, but what he was, he was the vibe guy. You know, I heard that he, he trained in Gentai Shiatsu Massage, and he was also a bit of a yogi, but... That was kind of unconfirmed until recently. He was found... Well, he was found down there talk to you. He was teaching the penguins to shift. He was teaching the penguins to shape. They said that that really was what he wanted to do. He wanted to have an impact. He wanted to have an impact on the environment. He wanted to really reach out and expand. And I think the penguins, black and white, you know, really... I think that really speaks for what the punk movement is. You know, there are no boundaries. So there are no boundaries historically. I love the pimps. I, I love one pimp in particular. He was just fucking something else. I remember when I was like 16, I was in my room in London and I, I saw this photo of him. And like they were just a shitty punk band in London. This, you know, they didn't have a reputation here, but it spoke to me. And even through that photograph, I felt the connection. So I dropped out of school and flew to Sydney go and find the pin. Like, these, <laughs> the girls would call me the pin cushion. They thought I was some kind of groupie, but it really, it, it wasn't like that. It was about love. It really was about love. Um, it was only last week that I was in at the bar and I almost got a, a, a foot to my face. I mean, actually, I did get a foot to my face. Ollie, for fuck's sake, I mean, why the fuck did she do that? All it was because it was, you know, I said, no more, no more whiskey, no more whiskey. I threw her out of the bar. She refused. She threw a fucking kick to my face. But um, yeah, who knows? Maybe, maybe another time, another place. Richie was my boyfriend. Ollie introduced us. I was 14 at the time. He said the age wasn't a problem. But then I told my mum, and I think he's in jail now. Ollie, if we were to talk about Ollie, she was, I mean, she was very shy, but, uh, but I mean, I have to say, she was, 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 she was beauty, you know what I mean? I mean, I have to say, maybe, well, they touch me in ways, you, like, you don't want to know the details, you know, it's, you don't want to know the details, the police don't want to know the details, it's like, I'll keep that to myself, but, so when I got to Sydney and started seeing them play and I made a pass at Adam, like I, I bought him some beers and gave him some cigarettes. I didn't even smoke at this point, I just thought it would make me look cool. Um, and there was just like some stupid rumour or whatever that he was actually in love with Olivia, but I, I knew he was just playing hard to get him. Like, Boys do that all the time. Um, so I thought, you know what, I can play this thing too. Uh, I bleached my hair, I got a nose ring, and I pierced both of my nipples. And I mean, I was never going to have tits like Megan Hunt, but at least I could be Ollie. And um, but after I bleached my hair and did all of this, like, he, 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 he noticed me, and uh, it happened. I mean, it may have only happened once, but like, it was love. And uh, he, he said that he always wanted me, and I'm just waiting 
Graham to call home in since the pins broke up. I guess he's been really busy, but I, I'm still waiting. He, he's got my number. I want to listen to their record, but it doesn't exist. I can't, I can't listen to them because there's no record. But still, still, the greatest band. I'm going to make some t-shirts. It says pins. I'll tell you why they're not a part of the industry. Because me, I was flown out to Sydney and, you know, my editor only sends me out for, for, the, for, the, for the cream of the crop. So I arrive thinking they're really something. And when I get there, they say to me, no, you know, it's worse because you're not punk. You're not punk enough, they say. You're not punk enough, please. What is that, you know? So anyway, so I go away because, I mean, I am, a, I am good at what I do. This is my career. And I go out and I turn myself into a punk. I put the safety pins in the ears and I, I return and they barely even recognise me. And I meet them at this bar called Darlow Bar in Sydney. And they schmooze up to me because, you know, I'm, I'm looking the part, I'm looking the part, I am. And we chat and I start to get some very good material out of them, I do. And then eventually I say to them, you guys are quite Age of Aquarius, the way that you were brought together. You know, I, I figured really, you know, the new punk age is, is brought together by the, by, 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 by the, by the energy of the universe. I, I do believe that. And all of a sudden they turn to me and they say, you're a fucking hippie. I swear, that's what they said to me, I swear to you, they said, you're a fucking hippie. And next thing I know, next thing I know, they're carrying me out. Out of my arms, out of my legs, you know. They're Megan and Jay, that's who carried me out. That's the two who carried me out. And they took me outside and they just, they just, they just discarded me on the street, like some, I don't know, some child, you know. And so, that was it for me. That was it for me. I realised that they don't want to be a part of the music industry. Then they are not... A part of the music industry. They're outsiders, is what they are. They're something else. You know, they are the greatest band that could have been, that were, <laughs> that could have been, that actually were. That could have been. Importantly, I think we have to really rediscover and we have to understand how they changed the movement and how they really influenced it and affected it from the outside in because they came so much later than those pioneers. And when, you know, you can talk about bands like the Ramones and the Clash and the Six Pistols, but really if everything was to happen in conjunction with itself, I think we would say that the movement that the pins were able to encapsulate, that really influenced those guys. And it was so many years later, the redefinition of punk, the re the re-refinement of a movement, but I think what is important in that regard is that if they were to have happened in the same time, words cannot express the impact that their, not only their lack of performance, but their, their complete lack of press, they held something within them, this visceral being that was, that was beyond explanation, and as I said, you know, when they would stand up on stage and your eyes would be drawn to me and then drawn to Ollie and Manson, James, shirtless in a leather jacket, wrapped up in pins. He would, be, he would be playing the guitar, you would hope, but you were never really sure. And as we know, it never really happened, but it was there. And in his scripts, you saw the feet, you saw the hands. And I think it's important to remember that without those hands, and without that feeling, punk would never have been. And without the pins, we know that punk really never was. Look, I don't know what happened with the pins. There's all these fucking stories. She fucking fucked one of the guys. I don't know why. And then after that, they fucking vanished. I've heard some stories. Fucking, I don't know. 
pokies and a whole heap of shit, gambling addiction, all this different fucking crap. But they're not here anymore. And the thing is, it's better. Music is better without them fucking around. I don't know what happened. My mum wouldn't even see them anymore. I did hear a rumour that they all just lived in um, a cave somewhere in New Zealand and they were developing some sort of incestuous family together. I don't know. Rumours are rumours. What do you know? From what I understand, Jimmy ended up in prison. It was something about putting his dick in a friend's dash in, in London or something like that. Um, but you know, after that, they just kind of fell apart. He, he was always the linchpin. He was the only one who ever had any musical talent. Drummer broke his leg. Everyone got pissed off because their merch got stolen. And just no one was really happy at the time. But fuck do I know what really happened. Pins, man. Fucking ace band. Real good band. I think Ollie came home one day and found Richie listening to Deep House and, and kicked him out of the band. You know, fair enough. Yeah, I, he was the glue man. I think they just all fell apart after that. Pens are just... They're designed to disappear. Like, the mystery element is just part of the band. Like, they started to break up. It's as simple as that. The thing is, in the music industry now, if you don't respect the Colosseums, the, co the columns which hold up the whole music industry, which is the press, then the whole thing's gonna fall down around you. That's what happened to the pins. Whatever happened to the pins? What kind of fucking question is that? Obviously the pins broke up so Adam and I could start a family. You can't raise kids around all of those drugs and the sex and Megan's tits. Like, he's just getting the money from the contract so we can get a place together. But what I understand happened is they, they decided to become horticulturalists and now they're really championing the movement in in, in backyard horticulture, which is fantastic. I'm glad that that's the case because the soil and the land, they are within us as our own punk exists within our soul. And I think that's important. I think that's important to remember. I'm glad that that, that is the case. Yes. It was only last week that I heard about Jay and Richard and uh, heard some story about their Christian rock band. I mean, for fuck's sake. I hear that they... Uh... So he did some weapons grade LSD, some stuff left over from the MK Ultra stuff, you know the stuff the CIA did, and uh, one of them's now living on the other side of the moon in a spaceship. But I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, like that's, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just rumor, isn't it? But... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be a anymore. <laughs> I don't want to be a anymore. I don't want to be a anymore. I'm out. 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 I'm out.